Hello, hello. Uh, yes, I totally in person just told you to watch me on YouTube. The more the merrier, right? More Mac, more merry. All right. Um, if you haven't done so already, please put out in order all of your homework from the past two weeks. So all of chapter four with your yellow stamp card. And as you are working on 4.12, um, I will come around and be work on stamping all of that in. Okay. Uh, you will have your test tomorrow. And um We'll, we'll see how, uh, how this has worked, all right? So um, hopefully you have been diligent, making sure that you're getting your work done, all right? Um, as well as make sure you're doing your notes up through number 52. I'm going to check that tomorrow. They are all in the notes um, under seventh grade math section in Google Classroom, okay? All right. So speaking of notes, look right here, it says notes 36. Oh, and here's a secret. You get to use your notes on your test. So I wanna show you how you can use these references to find it, all right? So look at this one here, it says notes 36. So you can actually, as you have your test, open in your notes and find it. So that's why you have your table of contents. And I really want you to be confident using that as a resource. Okay, all right, so 412. All right, so number one says you can spend up to $35 on a shopping trip. You wanna buy a shirt that costs $14. Write and solve an inequality that represents the remaining amounts of money you can spend if you buy the shirt, okay? So Ultimately, um, what the notes say on page 36 is you can solve these inequalities as if it were, instead of having the equal sign, you actually have the inequality sign, okay? So you have a certain amount of money, right? And um, you can spend up to $35, okay? So up to 35 Okay, so the amount of money that you have is less than, you know, less than 35, spent up to. Now, here's when I was looking at this, I wasn't sure what to do. I wasn't sure if it should be just this, uh, ex it's less than 35 or less than or equal to. And so when I was looking at it, it says you can spend up to. And so because of that, I left it as just this less than because it didn't say you could spend up to or all of, I guess. And it's just, I don't know, it's one of those, I think it's ambiguous. So I either way, I, I'm just gonna stick with this, okay? So it says you want to buy a shirt that costs $14, okay? So if it costs $14, that's gonna be taken out of the total amount of money that you have. Okay, so we're just going to solve that. S or X has to say less than 35 minus 14 or plus a negative 14. Five minus four is one. Three minus one is two. All right, so that's what you have left. That's the amount of money you have left to spend if you buy the shirt, okay? So this next one, that's notes from page 36. Number two, or was it number three? Oh, it's number three. All right. We'll get to that when we get there. Number two. So I asked Mrs. Howe what Dorito was, and she said it's the shape that we come up with like this when we are solving equations and it looks like a Dorito. So I told her it makes me, I, and I actually, since I've been doing these and seeing Dorito, I have bought several bags of Doritos in my house. So that's what Dorito means. All right. So 2X plus five equals 27. All right. So we need to solve for X. And so that just means that we need to get X by itself. First thing we need to do is move the five and we're going to do that by adding a negative five to each side. So that leaves us with two X 
equals 22. Two times X is multiplication. Opposite of that is division. So I'm gonna divide both sides by two. Leaves us with X equals 11. And look at this. We have a Dorito shape. And I used yellowish orange, nacho. Nacho cheese Doritos, the original. <laughs> All right, now that brings us to number three, which is another inequality. So I put on here, you're gonna check your notes number 37. And uh, we're just gonna solve this as we would an equation. 3X is greater than 15 to get X by itself. Same thing, so we have 3X greater than 15. Three, it's three X is three times X. Opposite of multiplication is division. So whatever we do to one side of the sign, we have to do to the other. And that's gonna give us X is greater than five. Okay, so with the notes on 37, we'll tell you if um, you are dividing or multiplying by a negative symbol, then it's gonna switch the direction of that inequality sign. If we had negative 3x is greater than 15, then what you would do when you divide both sides by negative three, then you flip the direction of the inequality, okay? So that's what that's saying, but we don't have that yet. All righty, so I think that's it for classwork. Yeah, all right. So now, easy finding the perimeter of a triangle. We know that it's three-sided, but we're going to put in some variables in here and make it exciting, all right? Speaking of Doritos, well, triangle Doritos here. All right, so this says, given the perimeter, find the measure of the third side. Okay, so first thing that we want to do is we want to make sense of the problem. Okay, so if the perimeter is seven and two of the sides are as noted, right? Three and two, um, then the third side must be seven, which is the perimeter, minus the sum of those two sides, okay? So for number one, uh, here we are for number one. Okay, so if we have a perimeter, of 14n plus 12. And then our two sides are 3n plus eight and 2n minus one. Then the sum of those two sides subtracted from our total perimeter will give us um, the length of the third side, okay? So we are going to do our perimeter, 14n here, I'm gonna move it up so I have more room. Okay, so our perimeter is 14n plus 12 minus, and then we're gonna add these two sides together. 3n plus eight plus 2n minus one, okay? So in those brackets, they're the same as parentheses. Okay, so we just did it because it's a bigger amount. So in here, we're gonna add the opposite in here and the same thing here. So really this is um, times negative one is how we're gonna get that out, okay? So that's, we see that on the step there. I ought to check, make sure I was doing the right thing. All right, that looks like a seven. It is not a seven. This is a plus a negative one. Okay, and we're going to distribute that. And I, of course, I did not give myself enough room to draw my distribute arches. Let's see, I can do it up here. So distribute here, 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 and here. Okay, so all of that times negative one. Re rewrite this first part, 14n plus 12 plus negative one times positive 3n is a negative 3n plus negative eight plus, look, it's changing all their signs, 
negative 2n plus, here we go, negative times a negative gives us a positive, okay? So now we have to combine like terms, okay? So let's do everything that has the n. So we have 14n, negative 3n, and a 2n, okay? So that is 14n and a negative 3n gives me a positive 9n minus two more. So that's gonna be 7n, okay? And so now just my numbers, there we go. Plus, all right, 12 and a negative eight gives me four plus one more is five. Okay, so our third side is 7n plus five. Let's check it. Uh-oh, they got 9n. Oh, for crying out loud, let's see where I went wrong. So here, combine like terms. Oh, so look at, they did what was inside the parentheses first. Hmm. 3n and the 2n. Oh, I see what they did. All right, well, let's see. So hold on, you can either cross this out or erase, but maybe watch what I do first, see if I can get the same thing as the example. All right, so, and of course, that's part of the PEM does, doing what's in the parentheses first. So it looks like they combined inside first. So that's gonna be, oops. 14n plus 12 plus negative one times. Okay, so here they did uh, 3n and 2n is 5n plus eight and a negative one is going to be seven. Okay, now let's distribute. What they got here? No. Oh, it is. Yes. Okay. Whew. All right. Let's distribute now. So negative one to here and to here. So then we have 14n plus 12 plus negative 5n plus negative 7. Okay. Now we'll combine like terms. So that gives us 9n. I don't remember what I had before. You have it written down so you can compare. Um, plus, oh, it is different. Okay, uh, five, 12 and negative seven is gonna give me a positive five, 9n, yay, plus five, oh, whoops. 9n plus five, all right, I got it. Woo, I'm glad I checked the answer on that example. So that is totally a lesson. Follow the PEMDAS, do what's in the parentheses first. All right, so let me move this up. If you <laughs> copied me the first time, you can either erase or you can just cross, put a line through it and then rewrite it with this. Go ahead, if you weren't copying it down as I was working it the second time, you can pause right now and get that down, all right? Okay. And to number two, all right. So we only have four to do that are like this. So of course, this right here, this is our perimeters and then our side A and our side B, okay? So we are going to do, so we are number two. Our perimeter is 16N plus 12 minus, oh, <laughs> hold on, there's the dog, hold on. All right, sorry about that. Was that as loud for you in the microphone as it was here? Goodness gracious, uh, my uh, husband's uh, worker came back to return the truck and trailer from work, so. Vicious, right, she went to get him, <laughs> all right. Where were we? So this is our perimeter, 16n plus 12. And we are going to subtract the sum of those two sides, okay? So it is 
uh, 2n, side A is 2n plus 6. Now, you'll see that all of these are written in parentheses. I'm not putting that in here. I'm just leaving it in the big brackets because um, in front of each of those parentheses is a positive one to distribute. So I'm just going to take them out right now. Okay, there's no reason to have them in there, you know, just like the example. Okay, so 2n plus 6 plus 4n minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to add the opposite on all of these. And this is going to be a plus a negative. And there's a 1 that's right there. Okay, just inferred. All right, so combine what's in the parentheses first. 16n plus 12 plus negative 1 times, okay, so we have 2n and 4n, and then 6 and negative 3. Okay, so that is 6n plus 3. Okay, now we're going to distribute the negative one times each of these. So now we have 16n plus 12 plus negative one times six is negative 6n plus negative one times three is negative three. Combine like terms gives us 16n and the negative 6n gives us a positive 10n plus 12 and a negative three is a positive nine. All right, so that's the length of the third side. Please be on the answer key. It is, all right. Woo. There it is, number two. Number two. <laughs> all right, here we go, let's go on to number three. Okay. Number three. So we have a perimeter of 9n plus 8. Okay, and to find our third side, we are going to subtract the sum of the two sides we do know. We know side A, let me draw a line through these so I can get the right ones. Side A is 5n plus 3. Side B is 2n plus two. We're going to combine like terms in our parentheses or our brackets first. Minus 5n and the 2n is a 7n. 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, so I left this space here because of course this is a negative one at the opposite. We're going to distribute that. Okay, all right, 9n plus eight plus negative one times seven n is negative seven n plus negative one times five is negative five. Combine like terms. Now we have a nine n and a negative seven n gives us two n plus three, which is eight in a negative five. Two n plus three. Here it is on our answer key, all set. That was number three. All right. All right. On to number four. Okay, number four. Here we are. We have a perimeter of 15n minus eight. And we are going to subtract so that's our perimeter. To find our third side, we're going to subtract the sum of the sides we know. So side A is 3n plus 8. And then side B, 6n minus 5. Okay. Add the opposites in here. And you know, I'm just going to add in. So this is minus this whole thing, but of course we have a one there. So we're gonna add that opposite also. All right, so let's combine our like terms within the bracket first. Plus negative eight 
plus negative one times, here's where we combine it, 3n and 6n and then 8n negative five. All right, so we have a 9n plus eight and negative five is gonna be three. Now we are going to distribute the negative one to here and to here. Now we have 15n plus negative eight plus negative one times nine is negative nine n plus negative one times three, negative three. Combine like terms gives us 15 and a negative nine is positive six n plus negative eight and negative three is negative 11. There it is, six n minus 11. All right, one more like this. All right. Almost. All right, number five, we have a perimeter of 14n plus 16. And to find the third side, we are going to subtract the sum of the two sides that we do know. Side A, 4n plus five, plus 5n plus three. Of course, this is a one at the opposite. All right, so let's combine like terms within our parentheses. So we have 4n and 5n, 5 and 3. So that gives us 14n plus 16 plus negative 1 times 4n and 5n is 9n plus 5 plus 3 is 8. Let's distribute here. And here gives us 14n plus 16 plus negative 9n plus a negative 8. Combine like terms. Gives us 14n and a negative 9n is positive 5n plus 8. Woohoo! Got it. All right. And go on to number six. No number six. I don't know if there is number six and I didn't paste it, but if there is, see if you can do it on your own. Raise your hand if you need help. If not, you are done. All right. So right now, there you go. All right, so once you are finished with 4.12, add this to your math. If I already came around and stamped it, then you can just leave out 4.12 in your yellow card. You can put away the rest of your homework right now. Uh, depending on what time it is, you are either copying your notes up through 52 or you are going to start working on your Generation Genius for electromagnetic uh, spectrum. You are going to watch the video, answer the post video discussion questions, and then do the quiz. You can use the PDF and the video for your quiz, okay? If you're finished with that before break, your choices are, uh, first choice, not a choice, my first, uh, you have to do this, is to do your notes up through number 52. Once you are finished with that, then you can work on either your iReady math or your iReady reading. Remember that one past lesson in each subject is due this week. All right. So I'm so happy to be back with you guys. Um, and yeah, now you get me a live version. All right. Good job, you guys. Bye-bye.